Hello, my name is Tom Wilson, and I am the Standard Supply Clergy for St. Andrews by the Sea uh, in Nags Head, North Carolina. We'll do the service for the second Sunday of Pentecost, and uh, that service begins on page 78 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 78. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Turning to page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in singing hymn number 541, Come Labor On. 541 in your hymnal, Come Labor On. Service continues on page 80 of the Book of Common Prayer. 
the versicle and responses. Lord, open our lips. And, and our, our mouths mouth shall, shall proclaim your praise. your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Alleluia. Worship, Worship the, Lord the Lord in the beauty, beauty of holiness. holiness. Come, Come, let, let us, us adore him. him. Let us say together the Venite, found on the Book of Common Prayer on page 82. Page 82. Together. Come, Come let, us let us sing to the Lord. Lord. Let us let shout, shout for joy in the rock of our salvation. Of our salvation. Let us let come us before his presence with thanksgiving, and, and raise a loud shout to him with songs. songs. For the Lord the is a great God, God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 116. We'll read it responsively by half verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. How shall I repay the Lord? For all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of my salvation. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord. In the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am, I am your servant and, and the child of your handmaid. You, you have freed me from my, my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And, and call, call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence, in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O oh Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Lord, Father and, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, and he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent, Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared, and set, them before, set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. Then he said to the, they said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh, yes, you did laugh. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The song of praise is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 90. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. 
Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, <laughs> and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The name of this reflection and poem is called Empathy Coming to Town. This is the second of a series of three reflections and poems focusing in on the Trinity. Last week, I shared a metaphor that I found helpful from Dr. Alan Keith Lucas, my thesis advisor and professor at the School of Social Work at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Keith was writing about the nature of a helping relationship that had in it three elements, reality, empathy, and support. He called it the Trinity because if you leave out any one part of that relationship, then there is no relationship and we just end up wasting our time and the time of the, whoever we are in a relationship with. Keith was born in 1910 in England and graduated from Cambridge and University with honors in 1931 and got a master's uh, in English in 1935. Keith has started his life as a ethical humanist and saw no reason for a concept of God to muddy the waters of his life but he started his professional life as a teacher and then headmaster of a school where he found himself helping teach students. It is in that helping process with the students that he, when he was a teacher and headmaster, that he started to experience an awareness of something beyond just business as usual, that we are not placed in this earth just to teach subjects or to uh, keep order but to form relationships. He came to the United States in 1937, got a master's degree in social work, and then became an American citizen and joined the U.S. Army during World War II. In 1950, he came to Chapel Hill. He joined the faculty of the School of Social Work until his retirement in 1975. I was one of the speakers at his retirement because I felt that he had helped me grow spiritually. I deeply mourned him when he died in 1995. Over the years of his career, Keith had been incredibly interested in the interplay between religion and the helping of people and how people of faith might use their faith to work with people in helping relationships. In conversations with him, he would weave in stories of religious people throughout the ages, people of empathy, like Francis of Assisi in the 13th century, Reinhold Niebuhr, Rein Martin Luther King Jr., and Dorothy Day in the 20th century, and St. John Chrysostom in, Chrysostom 
in the fourth century, all of them getting into trouble because they cared. Chrysostom was a bishop in the nominally Christian Roman Empire, and his empathy for the poor would always be disturbing to the authorities who wanted order and business as usual. In a homily to the Gospel of Matthew, Chrysostom preached, do you wish to honor the body of Christ? Do not ignore him when he is naked. Do not pay him homage in the temple clad in silk, only then to neglect him outside when he is cold and ill-clad. He who said, this is my body, is the same one who said, you saw me hungry and you gave me no food. And whenever you did to the east of these, my brethren, you did it to me. What good is it if the Eucharistic table is overflowed with golden chalices when your brother is dying of hunger? Start by satisfying his hunger, and then, with what is left, you may adorn the altar as well. You may already know the name of Chrysostom, for that is his prayer that we say at the end of morning prayer. It's the one that says, Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you promise to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us. Having in this truth, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus sends out his disciples, telling them to enter into a relationship with the people of the land. When he saw the crowd, the, the gospel says, when he saw the crowd, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of the heavens has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. The disciples came to different towns in Jesus' name, armed with Jesus' compassion. The Greek word that Matthew, the Matthew's editor uses is splagenesomai, which means literally that your insides are in an uproar. The word is also in the aorist tense. Now, we don't have an aorist tense in, in English. We just use past, present, and future. But the aorist tense suggests something that is not confined to a moment in time, but a continuing. The translator you have says, in good English, Jesus had compassion on the crowds. But in the aorist tense, I would translate it as Jesus compassioning, which is not a good English word, but it is true. Being moved with compassion means that you can't just sit there and do nothing. This is a human being who is going through a rough time, you think yourself, and you have to move. Compassion, empathy, is not pity, where you are safely removed from the object and all you feel is sorry for them. Empathy is a continuing act of active imagination, where you're feeling in your gut what it must feel like for the other and for the Christ in you as you're moving to help. It will always be their problem, but they have you to count on to help them through it. They know they don't have to carry it alone because you're gonna be there. Aristotle suggested that there is an unmoved mover behind all of creation once the laws of motion and cause and effect are placed into being. Where good deeds bring about good rewards and bad deeds bring on bad rewards. It's karma. And in karma, there's no room for grace. We just have to accept the situation. You reap what you sow, God's in heaven, and you're not based on what your ancestors have done. Don McLean in his song, American Pie, casts an image that what the world looks like. 
when he sang, I went down to the sacred store when I heard the music years before, but the man there said the music wouldn't play. And in the streets the children screamed, the lovers cried, and the poets dreamed. But not a word was spoken, the church bells all were broken. And the three men I admire most, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, just caught the last train to the coast, singing bye-bye, Miss America Pie. The day the music died. But Jesus' message is that the kingdom of the heavens, Matthew's circumlocution for the presence of God, is coming near God. God is not the unmoved mover up above the skies somewhere or catching the last train to the coast, but right here and right now, so close that it's impolite to refer to God as a, as a third person, as if he had left the room. But he's there. He, she is there with us right now, wherever we are. And the disciples were part of that healing. Their insides roiling with compassioning as action is put into play. 16th century Spanish mystic, um, Carmelite nun Teresa of Avila had a prayer which reminded her and us that we're not just to sit back and say, ain't it awful? She prayed, God of love, help us to remember that Christ has no body now on earth but ours, no hands but ours, no feet but ours. Ours are the eyes to see the needs of the world. Ours are the hands with which to bless everyone now. Ours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Ours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Amen. In a couple weeks, you're going to get your new rector. And he's going to come to lead worship with you and be with you as a living message, me, um, image of the Trinitarian God, joining with you, who are also living images of the Trinitarian God. He and you will enter into a covenant with each other to remind each other that the King of the heavens has come near to you and us to this community in which we live. God is not gone somewhere else. God is here right now in the space between us. Like God the Father, Nathan will need to be real with you to tell you the truth as he has the grace to see it and not to play let, let's pretend. In response, you will be real with him telling him the truth that you have the grace to see. His task as God the Son is to enter into your broken lives without pity or blame, but with empath empathic compassioning as you will enter into his brokenness without pity or blame, but with empathic compassioning. His task as God the Holy Spirit will be to offer his support in your walk of faith in this world as you will offer him support. Next week, we'll take a look at what that support will look like. This is the poem that I wrote in order to get into this. It's called Empathy Coming to Town. He looking, thinking, this ain't right. My gut's telling me you don't stand by. Get up. Don't be content with just a sigh of pity, but rage as compassion might. Yet, hold a moment and breathe in deep. For this passion's needing, listening spirit, guiding action, not reaction, without limit. But in reality's plan, that will healing reap. 
We are not in this alone, but heaven's here in the space between us. Begin as we must, knowing the vine is in whom we trust, not in our words and thoughts, but in our actions and prayers. In this real world, with empathy and support, come into town, Jesus' presence to report. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 96. Page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Christ Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord's Prayer is found on page 97 in the Book of Common Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A, found on page 97 of the Book of Common Prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your, Let your people, people sing, sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only, for only you can you live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. You are saving help on all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the, nor the hope of the poor be taken, taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day, Proper 6, is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 230. Keep, O Lord, your household the church in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A Collect for Grace, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 100. Lord God, almighty and everlasting, you have brought us safely to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity, and in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The following prayer was offered by Marlene Herndon, parishioner of All Souls Point Loma, California, in 2015, as a prayer for a new season of ministry with a new rector, and we have adapted it for St. Andrews. O oh God, as we are entering this time in the life of St. Andrews by the sea, refresh us with a new vision and help us to meet well all duties and responsibilities that come to us. May we show hospitality to our new rector, the Reverend Nathan Finnan and his family, and welcome them with our support and prayers. Fill him, O Lord, with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and understanding. We beseech you for the touch of your spirit, that his heart may yield to you in obedience, reverence, and confidence. Endue our hearts with gratitude and love for the blessings of this new ministry that will not only give joy and comfort, but also by example and influence, will lead others to love and serve you. 
Impel us constantly through this new ministry to gracious acts of kindness done to others in the Master's name, and for his sake, that we may become strength to the weak, hope to the despondent, joy to the sorrowing, power to the tempted, so that we may live that through us your kingdom may in part come and your will more fully be done among the people. Grant that your servant Nathan may find his strength and dedication from the leading of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the new opportunities that are ours. Help us meet them with courage and trust in you. May we be filled with the gratitude of the Savior, Jesus, who lifts us from the burden of sin and anxiety and gather this family about yourself and protect us. In the name of the one who calls us beyond ourselves, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The general thanksgiving is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truthful, thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Christostom in the Book of Common Prayer on page 102. Almighty God, you have given us the grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us now sing, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing, a hymn number 686. 686, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing.
We've had a lot of things going on in our lives during this time. We've had the facing of viruses, viruses of germs, and the virus of racism, with explosions of anger and fear. Our task is to pay attention to one another, to not put other people into boxes, but as with the empathy to understand what they're going through, what it's like to go through your life worrying about what's going to happen to your children. Please, this week, reach out. Reach out beyond yourself. Reach out to people who you don't usually connect with. And listen. Listen with your heart open. We ask you to hold this church in your prayers and this community in your prayers. Pray for our, the leaders of our nation that they may make wise decisions. So ask for your prayers. And then go into the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. So go in peace of Christ and the strength of the Holy Spirit to love and to serve God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.